Um, it's quote cool, the little anthology series. It looks like of different takes, and then I kind of seen some. Uh, looks like we're gonna have uh, the Rick and Marty creators as well in an episode. There was one. Yes, I... there were. There were sorry. Uh, there were a lot of people. If you looked at those credits, there were actually a, a hell of a lot of uh, very famous people in that. Not that I wasn't expecting it. They, they've been doing good. They did good on the first two seasons. I think they were pretty good adaptions. It's funny. This actually, especially hearing uh, the voice of Huey or whatever, seems like it's oh, probably going to be even more uh, accurate. I, think, I hope it's... Uh, I think Huey's going to be played by Simon Pegg, most yeah, likely. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he is, uh, which works which because he's awesome. originally... He's, he's, a, he's a huge yeah, fan of the boys. Oh yeah, but um, even beyond a fan, he fits the original, um, the original character in the in the comics. He's mm -hmm. originally uh, English or Scottish or whatever. He's not mm -hmm. American. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. In the comics, yeah, his his English. I think most of all of them were English, weren't they? Uh, no, uh, him and Billy were. I think the only two. Okay. Yeah, and then I think oh, well, uh, the other one was French. Yeah, the Frenchy, other one was and then French. you had the chick who was like Asian. So yeah, some, yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah, then no, obviously Homelander and all them were American. So yeah, I do remember him being uh, English from reading just like I think I read only like five, six ish. But from yeah, they're fine. They're, those... they're fun to read. Oh. I think they're. A little... I've always wanted to yeah keep uh, reading them, but you know just more stuff to, to catch up. Yeah, on there's too, so I much. I finally. Do finally started catching back up on stuff this last week i went through a bunch of the x-men stuff i just i started on the death of dr strange i caught up on the hulk caught up on thor uh and i i hate to be this guy because i feel like such a marvel shit saying it but oh my god bro i really wish dc would release some decent goddamn comics like yeah, they've been doing just. Uh, I have. Uh, I have only. I only do a few things that they have, but uh, for what, everything what you... I usually see, it just looks like it's mostly Batman. Batman. But, it's uh, fucking. All right, let me like let me pull it up. Put some new Aquaman stuff finally yeah, out there. they, they and, finally uh, did Aquaman, which is like the worst decision you probably could have made out of him. But at least he's got a movie coming out with um, Jason Mo eventually. So at yeah. least there's. And then they do a. But isn't it with Aqualad now as, as well? They're they both. Do a, a, they did Queen Mira. They did a bunch of weird. It's all over the place, bro, to be honest. And the, the what I was going to do is I was just going to pull up the last two or three weeks comic list to like, because you're 100% mm -hmm. right. We're uh, Just list them the off The last thing quick. I read from them that was really good was the Swamp Thing, the Green Hell, I think was it was called. Was it that one? Really that, it. Was it that one it's where it's label. like in the future? Where it was like uh, that pop post apocalypse? Yeah, 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 like that. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's like basically that. it's like the the green and the rot and the or whatever. Yeah, I, I started mm -hmm. that one. I didn't finish that one yet, but I, that yeah, one is the good. Art was really good. But that was like what a month ago art? was that came yeah, out. It was about a month ago. Well, yeah, maybe even older now. I think it's more than that actually. Um, but so for example, right, just going through the list, and it's not that they're super bad, but it's like all right, we have Aquaman becoming the becoming, Batman. The Night, Detective mm -hmm. Comics, Green Lantern, Justice League. I actually did pick up that The Night one. The only reason why was because uh, Chip Zadarsky is writing oh. this one. Oh, I might check that one out then. He's pretty good. Yeah, that's the only reason why I picked it. I was but, like, okay, uh, Chip's I, doing it. Looks, it it looks okay. It. And I'm not going to lie. The problem isn't that they aren't good. The Batman stories are good. Almost yeah, all the Batman just, stories that come out are good. It just gets much. Saturated. And then once again, if it's not Batman, then later on the list, it's Nightwing. And then it's like the two Robin. of the titles. There's a bunch of Robin books now. Oh, God, there's like three Robin books out. And that's my thing there's is it Bat wouldn't Girl, be a problem. Uh, book coming out as well, I think. The Batgirls uh, team There's or a bunch like of that. them, yeah. So on this particular one, you have one Supergirl, two different Wonder Woman comics, a Scooby-Doo, one Flash, one Green Lantern, a Justice League, and then three Batmans and an Aquaman. That's actually pretty good for them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, and when you But when you compare it, to like even with all the x-men stuff going on here are the list of the the marvel ones you have x-men then x lives of wolverine then you have venom thor marvel voices legacy king conan iron fist hulk fantastic four devil's reign amazing spider-man i think i just added a bunch of new stuff coming out and there's uh, a lot of cool good stuff coming um let me see and, what uh, was image had some cool stuff coming out too uh, besides just like King Spawn, they had some other stuff too. 
Yeah, uh, he's been going hardcore on the spawn stuff for sure. Well, they also um, did Tom the. Uni- doing didn't that he more do spawn- another one? Yeah, he's doing the spawn universe kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. He did, I think it was on like a five uh, series though, and then you know, but at least it, he's then doing there's like it. the scorched book, which is basically an that... Avengers team. Plan yeah, book. that's the one I'm <laughs> thinking of. Is the scorched book? That's the one I really want to check out. I I haven't yeah. checked out King Spawn because I need to catch up in the regular spawn run. Yeah, um, I still need to too. So I, that's why I haven't really been reading anything else. I I still need to get. I'm only like. I think like 12 or 15 issues behind from the regular spawn issues. So once I start catching up those, I can finally read King Spawn and I think the Scorched and then some other stuff. But yeah, he's like doing some really cool figures too. He's getting into his, uh, well, he's, he's been doing, doing the really whole, good. uh, more spawn articulated figure. Like now he just came out with the She Spawn figure. Um, cause it's all for the spawn universe thing. So there was yeah, that. Yeah. He came with another Cygor figure. Uh, came out with the uh, a new guy, a new character that just came out from the Spawn comics. So, what was his name? Um, just wearing like a gas mask with a green hoodie over him, or kind of poncho, I guess you can say. What was his name? Uh, I don't know. I haven't gotten. I, I can't yet. remember. Yeah, he was a new character that they just released. Um, what else? What figures did they come out with? Oh, the uh, Redeemer figure came out. Uh, they came out with a Violator figure. They're, he's doing a lot of stuff for sure. Um, can't wait for the next. Oh, uh, he did also my favorite now uh, is the um, Cowboy Spawn. I forget cowboy. his name, though. I like it <laughs> because he's basically just wearing his cow. It, it's, it's, that's the time, I guess. No, no, no. Like, it's, 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 it makes sense. They do oh, it for the Gunslinger character. Spawn. That's what he oh, calls okay. it. Okay. Which is I much mean, cooler than the cooler Cowboy <laughs> Spawn. But, no, yeah, Gunslinger cooler. Spawn's pretty cool. Um, he's got this like really like not like normal kind of hat. It's like a really kind of tall looking hat, and oh, uh, we got the the he's got the, the actual cowboy boots pants. going on. Um, he's really cool design, that's for sure. Nice. Uh, but yeah, there's uh there's he's doing he's going all out. There. Uh, there's even I guess a, there's a medieval spawn which I did. Read, I did see uh, the medieval one time spawn. In his, that one's cool. Uh, like when his run one time, but yeah, because uh, when he first started doing his runs, he kind of would do like um. Every so often, he would kind of go off and do like uh, a different universe spawn, or not different, but like a different time period. He did, spawn, yeah. He did some be... interesting stuff with the, especially in the early runs of like sending him back in time or sending him to like a different uh, mm-hmm. world and to do like this. Like he, he definitely had a lot of openness. I think back then he does it more now when he does launch overs and stuff. But back right. in the day, he used to just do it every like twenty chapters. He'd do something random <laughs> and new. Uh, that's how you got anti spawn. That's how you got uh, yeah, all those ones. Yeah, tools. yep. Because every yeah, about twenty the... chapters, you'd throw something new in, which is good. But... It's it was it's a good formula. Um, but yeah, no, he's been doing pretty good on those ones. So I'm excited yeah. to see those coming out. He's also been doing good on all the other figures that have been coming out. For like, I know that they, they took care of all the recent. Uh, he's doing Princess DCU. Bride. That's he's who, doing. Oh yeah, but... he's doing all the DC multiverse is what they yeah. call it. They're his yeah. line, um, which he's been doing really good. I mean. For twenty dollar figures, still being twenty dollar figures, because a lot of the uh, Hasbro's and uh, everything's just been kind of going up. Uh, it yeah. was twenty twenty two ninety nine for Marvel Legends, and it actually it started off when I was starting like two years ago. It was nineteen ninety nine, and now it went the last year to twenty two ninety nine, and now the new price tag for this year is supposed to be twenty four ninety nine for a figure. So things are getting pretty inflated with the yeah, figures the... there. Everywhere else, so everyone's being way more pickier and choosier now, um, especially now that I think COVID's really like gonna start ending here in the next, like I said, hopefully year. So it seems like things are picking back to normal. That I think people are gonna start less buying figures or using less of their money and start doing other things like going out again and we'll see. I mean, going it's, traveling. It's all stuff, gonna be but... uh, it's all gonna be relative to how a the market and b the people turn out, right? It, it, it's one of those things where, um, for example, right, uh, my best example is not in uh, products like those, but in consumables like movies, which are a little more easily accessible and, and transportable, right, through the mm-hmm. digital forum. Uh, you know, this people aren't going back to the movie theaters like they once did, probably. I mean, they'll go back a bit, but I doubt that the movie theaters are going to recover that much after... A year and a half of people basically staying at home and watching movies and mm-hmm. being able to watch most new movies within uh, roughly a month of their release date. You know what I mean? Even yeah. stuff like Spider-Man is about to come back out on uh, Disney Plus, I think. Yeah, it should be coming out here soon. Which yeah, is surprised to me because it barely left the theaters, uh, mm-hmm. relatively speaking. And it did a pretty good run monetarily. So it, it did what it needed to do, especially... I think Spider... I don't know. I think it would have done good regardless because it's Spider-Man, but I do think it 
its ability to pass a billion really does show that we are getting out of those kind of COVID times and that we will have more movie right. stuff. But I'm right. not expecting. Well, I mean, even Disney, I think, just announced that they're going maskless now. I think today. I think that was an announcement. Yeah. I can't remember. Uh, uh, and it, which is, we'll I'm gonna, hopefully, I, I'm going to be honest here. It's always now. been an up and down for me because <laughs> <Right>. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a proponent of free freedom and of safety. Right. It's but right. it's up to people to choose and dictate that stuff. Not it shouldn't be up to necessarily the government. I don't like that kind of stuff. But if you know Disney and stuff do that, that's their prerogative because they own their own company. Uh, and seeing once again on the, the recovery time, I think it'll go, it'll increase right from where it is, but I don't think it's going to recover to the heights of what it was before, both because of the after effects of COVID's economic impact on Mm -hmm. people. Like it's one of those things where I I always laugh at people like there was less money made. There's actually a lot more money made during COVID or whatever. There were record profits, groundbreaking stock surges, right? All kinds of stuff. But uh, it's all about who receives that money. And so, like, consumers themselves are not having lots of extra income anymore to um, spend on things. Right. I mean, those stimulus checks are not coming yeah, in they're, anymore. They're out of, well. out of the, so that's, oh, yeah. yeah, that's another thing I, I think also has. Because bre- actually, you should check it out. There's this article that just came out. Um, and it was kind of like two sided right now. So like Mattel is on the side of like, hey, the toy industry is going to be on the up and up and everything's good in the mm-hmm. next couple of years mm-hmm. or so. Everything's really good. Uh, but I mean, Mattel is in a different area than what Hasbro's doing. But Hasbro's doing way bigger lines than what Mattel does. I mean, they only they do He-Man. Um, what else do they have? Uh, oh, Jurassic they Park. Of, yeah. um, they have a couple of things, but Barbie. Um, but they're not doing things like uh, Star Wars, Marvel yeah. Legends, um, just these other big here. That are just more bigger license here than what Mattel's really doing. So, and yeah. Ma- Hasbro's on the side that's saying that like in the next few years it is going to start kind of like the toy industry is not going to be like how it was it's been like these last few years as it as it has been Um, and they're expecting it to kind of not be as good in the next couple years so you should really check it out it's a really it was a really interesting article to feel like you know like how two companies were like hey just you know with their sides of it so um it was yeah it was interesting some guy posted up in the toy group and i thought nice. it was a yeah. no, interesting I mean, they, they, they do those things. they're saying <laughs> they do, do those things all the time with like movies and stuff i try to keep track of them doing like the stock right. pages but for me it's always rough because the the, the essential of any economic system is always about wit one the consumer and beat to the uh the medium in the forum right like how mm-hmm. Uh, so f- not to be offensive to people or to producers at being both a consumer and a producer, but uh, people eat whatever, you know, the best of whatever crap you throw at them, right? Like mm-hmm. as much as we might like complain that there's not that many great DC books out right now, you're going to read the best DC books that come out right now because that's all you have. Right. right. And so like, it's, it's one of those weird markets where it's not always like, geared towards actually delivering the best results when it's so competitive but i think it's going to be interesting in the years to come because like you said the the toy market itself has changed even before the covid drop right like we've talked about the slow shift towards adult consumers and how even though toys still are made for kids uh, in the younger age it's not made for kids around like 10 anymore like it used to be where there was this age of uh action mm-hmm. figure kids or oh, right. whereas now you're going to find a lot more 30 year olds like us out there collecting action Definitely. figures yeah which Spending, is nothing uh eight ninety dollars on an action figure <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> or Mexico. or or more <laughs> and having the money and the wherewithal too as well so even even before kids were a market but kids were never the market their parents were the market because mm-hmm. kids don't spend money their parents spend money so right. it's yeah, and so it's very interesting to see how it's gonna go. I think it's I don't think it'll necessarily be super bad. There are definitely gonna be effects of like the whole COVID economy and the lack of stimulus checks and free usable income right to spend on these kind of things. Mm-hmm. But I think there's also something to be said about the increase in like community. You know, uh, for example, we haven't been able to do like comic swaps and meets and stuff like that for a really long time, really, where you could meet up with people to do uh, figures or to check out things or do this and that. 
And I granted that hasn't been that prevalent anyway in the ca- past couple of years, but it was an mm-hmm. option. Whereas now you will be able to do stuff like that. Uh, the best comparison for me is like when the people play magic at the card shop games and everything, like they just oh, go into right. the shop and play magic. And in a similar style, people will like hang out in comic stores or, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that and talk with each other or certain spaces. So hopefully we get to see more of that. And because of that, there will be a, uh, a boom in sales and people wanting to buy right. these things and doing, but you never know, we'll man. See. I mean, yeah, like I said, with the, I'm I'm have to, having to be a little bit more pickier and choosier now these uh, this year with my figures because I mean that twenty four twenty yeah twenty five dollars for figures, well it's getting the a little same... steep there. And then if yeah. you want to do a whole wave like that, six figures, twenty five dollars for six figures for the build a figure, yeah, that's like almost two hundred. I think that is about yeah two hundred. Yeah, yeah so it's like yeah you. Oh no, it's a serious, it's become a serious, and what it kind of reminds me of, even though it's different but similar, is the way, um, and that's probably never going to go back down, you know, like, no, no, th- it's, this is going to be, a, inflation is, but people forget that barring government influence, right, barring the government coming in and changing the prices of things or reinventing the value of the dollar, inflation never mm-hmm. goes back down, ever, yeah, it just doesn't, it's, yeah, there's a couple different reasons, but like one of the big ones is that kind of like capitalist push towards more and more. Like if everybody's mm-hmm. already agreed to pay twenty five dollars, why would you ever accept anything less than that as right. the seller? Right. Like now yeah. everybody's paying that. That's the standard. Right. And, unless so. somebody comes in and starts producing again for twenty dollars, but then once again, it's that whole mindset of well, they can't profit as much as that other guy who's is charging twenty five dollars. Right. So they won't be as big. Well, it's a whole fun. Well, but they I, be- they, I don't know. Yeah, they better not go too high. <laughs> no, I said that. Or then some guys are like, well, if they're going to charge us at 25, they better at least do some better. Uh, right. And uh, so like paint jobs or better, like, you know, yeah, for better. That. No, I agree. And it's that's why I said it was it was interesting because I think it's similar but different to the video game thing where over the years, I mean, you remember when you could buy a video game for yeah. like 20 bucks. Yeah. And what's the now, now the price is 70, right? Uh, it's, price? I mean, it depends. If you want full access, some games, 120. not all games, but I know yeah. some of them are like 70 right now yep. for the pay- PlayStation 5 or 3. Yep. I heard now like people are doing the New Horizon. They're like, don't buy the PlayStation 5 version. Get the 4 version. It's cheaper, and then you can upgrade it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's and, – and for me, then I'm over here on PC like, crack, crack. I'll just wait a couple years, and then I can play it modded. <laughs> it's like I can have Kratos have the biggest head in all the world now. But uh, the train going choo choo. <laughs> yeah, choo choo. Oh god. But it's it's interesting to see. But at least for video games, the reason they somewhat got more expensive as time went on is because the the uh, technology is continually advancing and that and then just so if you, all the people that are involved in the game nowadays is just well, that I should mean, actually for AA bride, titles at least you know that would I actually mean. bring uh, prices down usually because it's um split of labor right ah. more people doing something well it's like animators right. There's mm-hmm. a reason animators don't get paid shit. And that's because there's a billion yeah. of them. Yeah, it's, that's it. It's, it's they an unfortunate. More for sure. No, they absolutely <laughs> should. It's it's one of the whole things why I don't know if you heard about the uh, the the Futurama thing mm-hmm. with John DiMaggio. Oh and... yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you actually. So I was happy for the Futurama coming back, but then I kind of thought like, well, that would kind of mess up the ending. That so such a good <sighs> ending that it did have already. It's had, and like, it's like, well, endings. what did they do to come back with? And then I was like, okay. Then I started hearing the the, the, uh, the rumors of he's not coming back, and I was like, oh, this isn't gonna work. Did so okay. This is another thing. Like, did you hear what happened to the Squid Billy show? No, what ha- I didn't hear okay, anything so about they them. Th- they're doing one last final season, right? But the, the guy who plays uh, early, I guess he said some things that he wasn't supposed to say. Oh, shit. And uh, he got fired. And guess who they replaced him with, though? Tracy Morgan. <laughs> How's that going to work? Well, you know what? He's I'm... just playing himself. It's uh, he kind of like tries to do like a southern accent I some, not, sometimes here and there, but like I gotta check this out because really, that's one of the him. few shows that I know is awful, but I yeah, love. Yeah, and after this is it, they're done. After this, no more after this. This will be the final season. I, yeah, I didn't know about this until it started playing like on the fourth or fifth episode. And I was like, Oh Who yeah, the hell is this? that just this came is out? Not- <laughs> this just came out in December. Oh shit! I'll have to check it out. That yeah. I mean, that's interesting. It does happen. To be fair, I think Squidbillies was nearing its runs end anyway. I mean, that's and it's fine. Yeah, yeah but no. Like, at least 
you know, ended off with the. I mean, whatever though. I mean, that's their. Squidbillies isn't one of those ones. At least Futurama had a some kind of plot ending in its plot. Because the, the truth is, Futurama never had a plot. It's not that kind of show. No, not really. Um, I mean, the only and, plot you could say is just the love between. Yeah, that's Fry the whole story. Is that and, really... and it's always kind of like up and down too. So it's like, yeah. But uh, and here was my thing with the Futurama one. People were really and some Futurama fans are still adamant that the uh, all the episodes that came from when they renewed it the first time were garbage because it's been canceled before. And then they yeah, renewed it on right. Fox. I do remember it and was some, canceled. And a lot of before, yeah. and a lot of Futurama fans like the diehard purists first, right? And yep. then Comedy Central picked it up. Yeah, it was on Fox for the first four seasons and then it had uh some movies that rekindled people's interest and then i think comedy central oh, bought it I and did they three did two movies that's right yep uh but and here's my thing and my point the first futurama had an ending there was like this right an ending and uh it wasn't as good as the second one i'm gonna be honest but once again a lot of purists whatever you might call them classicist futurama fans will will tell you that everything that was made after the movies or including the movies is garbage because it's not the original whatever this and that and that and this although i think almost everybody came back for the comedy central run even the writers i think were a lot of the same writers this time i'm not sure and i'm gonna be honest i'm not super thrilled especially because they couldn't couldn't get john dimaggio but at the same yeah, time, I mean, and this it's is good that he asked for more money. And I heard, I heard he was I asking actually for more, not just for him, him and I guess the whole cast. Well, yeah, and that both of those are misskewed. People have been pushing those around like he did that's it for I the heard, cast. Yeah, that's but, not what he said at all. Right. If you go read his quote, what he says is he asked for more, more money, but he believes everybody else deserves more too. He didn't say mm-hmm. he was doing it for them at all, ever. Plus, right. everybody else had already signed on. My thing, and here's going to be the part where everyone's like, fuck you, Axel. I just don't see how, how much money does he deserve to get paid for his voice role. As opposed to right. the hundreds of animators who are underpaid behind the roles. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I hear his complaints from his million dollar roles and stuff. And I just feel like it's bullshit. It's, he just wants more money, which is cool. Have your self-respect. But don't pretend it's because of some uh, mm-hmm. professional courtesy. If you w- if that was true, you would be trying to get your animator buddies, or maybe even the writers and the, you know, all the other people who actually produce a bulk majority of the characters' personality and lines. Right? right. I like John DiMaggio, and I like actors and actresses, but they interpret a character as we've talked about before, put forth by a director. Mm-hmm. Or a plot and script. And it's super great. Awesome. Love them. I do think that in general, voice actors, especially uh, in America, are not like very respected in their craft. But yeah. I, I, I also think that if that's the case, we need to think, take a whole sweeping review of the entire industry and talk about who really deserves more money. Because uh, for me, that would be the writers, the animators, the people who literally slave hundreds of hours in the studio and Mm -hmm. can't do their job from their house, which most voice actors do. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate, but true. Most voice actors work from a setup very similar to mine right here, where they have the microphone, the lines, they record, and then they send them out. So it's not that I don't respect them. I just feel like that that particular argument is a uh, red herring. That's not the real reason. He just wants more money. Cool probably deserves more money he's probably the most iconic voice on the show mm-hmm. uh, right. yeah, voice. I mean, although yeah. the hardest working voice actor on the show is no doubt billy west who does uh i think actually the person who does amy wong does more voices than anybody else by like two two times as many if you mm-hmm. didn't know because i know who does each voice actor uh, i think bender does about 20 or 30 uh billy west does about 20 or 30 and then Katie Seagal is the only voice actor who does one voice. And then the chick who does Amy Wong does like, and Phil Lamar does 20 or 30. Uh, and the chick who does Amy does like 60 voices or some shit. She does like okay. half of the voices in the show. It's actually crazy. But once again, either way, it's the, the point is, is like anybody who doesn't believe that the whole thing is a money grab is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? 
Right. Not from not from DiMaggio, but from Hulu. No, yeah, Hulu. Yeah, yeah Hulu's not going to do this if it can't make money, and it's not going to pay DiMaggio a whole shit ton of money when it can realistically cast a whole different voice actor as Bender and not even have to go for a similar voice because he's a robot. Someone in, <laughs> like I've seen a bunch of people are like, yeah, just have him tear it out and replace a new voice module. <laughs> Boom! New yeah, voice actor, works. and he's replaced. And uh, then you're not stealing the voice he made for Bender, right? So you're not right. infringing. Which that was the other thing. They're like, that's his creation. Is like, yes, the creation he made, contracted by the show. The voice of Bender doesn't belong to John DiMaggio. <laughs> it belongs to Futurama. They paid for that. Mm-hmm. Good money. Unfortunate, but true. It's the same concept of uh, firing what's her name uh, from the Star Wars thing, Gina Carano. Oh yeah, and like I heard they're actually, I guess, in talks of doing something with their still. I'm sure. Uh, why? Why wouldn't they? They're all about money. Yeah, they don't care. I mean, that's right. Once again, yeah. they never cared about any of those issues, right? That's the whole uh, thing. Is it's not about that. It's about business. Mm-hmm. It's money, 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 and that's the only color that the studio sees is green. They don't. They don't care. Well, the same with early, right? You could be the star of the show, but if you're fucking up the money, you got to go. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know, who you are or what you do or how good you are. Uh, Once you start fucking up the money, peace out. Which, uh, it's a shitty thing because, like, if more people would kind of, like, do these push these boundaries we'd get more interesting television and not the same bullcrap slapped on over and Mm -hmm. over but uh once again it's everybody's so sensitive today you know what i mean right everybody is very very sensitive to everything well i i was for example watching tropic thunder the other day Oh yeah. Uh, if and I'm like, there's no way they, they could make this movie nowadays. All right, now they, it yeah. would For sure, it would yeah. get destroyed. <laughs> like you have so much like racism, so much sexism, so much out like re- like making fun of uh, mentally handicapped people, right? Like, and then on top of that, Robert Downey Jr. is in blackface. <laughs> like eighty percent of the he... movie. Didn't they? Uh, didn't he? Didn't they want to nominate him for an award? I yes. think at one point for that. And he did get nominated. He didn't, he didn't yeah, want he to. Got, he just I didn't think win. He did get nominated. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he got did. nominated. Okay. He just didn't win because the uh, Dark Knight came out the same year. Oh, so yeah. they won all. That's the, Heath good, Ledger yeah. won you all. Can't the... compete with Heath Ledger, bro. No, eh? no, you <laughs> were winning that one. Which and he didn't. Just, <laughs> let, let's be honest. It was a cool performance, but he didn't. It was not the. <laughs> it was a comedy satire performance. And, oh no, definitely. Yeah, I and, always like that movie still with Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller's one of my favorites oh, yeah. too. Ben, ben Stiller's hilarious. <laughs> uh, I think I laughed so much because I forgot the other people that were in there were like Jack Black. Oh yeah, Jack Black was uh, in there too. That's a good I one. I can't remember the the kid's name, but the dude who plays like the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Oh yeah, he's and... in there too. Yeah, the one he's it, a, he does it, the voice for uh, Hiccup in How the Train yes, Dragon yep, as yep. well. He's he's done a lot of stuff actually now, yeah, but I know I can remember now. his name. I just can't remember. Uh, Zandusky or something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, oh, but I he... was gonna say we, we may have to cut this one off short here since uh, yeah. Uh, might be on that 30 minute mark. Oh yeah, no we... no worries, no worries. Uh in that case, but is the there only anything thing I want last to... minute stuff that you had yeah, had to say though um, or like that was coming out that, that you're excited for? I'm excited for the DC stuff, which is rare to say, but I'm really hoping that they kind of get it. Like I'm hoping I'm wrong about Pattinson and that he does a great Batman. Cuz that's I the heard people are always the like the reviews are good so far about it. I mean, we'll see though. Right, I haven't seen it and it's Usually, you know, people say are they on, on the other end, usually critics go in there bashing the movies, the DC I movies. I actually think so. it's it's always half and half because they're uh, the critics on Rotten Tomatoes bash, not the opening critics. And even then, like the critics almost never agree with the majority populace, which is dumb right. to me. Because why would you listen to critics who don't represent your views? Right. Like right. most, like even stuff like uh, you know, you'll have the critic score for um, Captain Marvel at like an eight, but let's be honest, it's not more than a six. It's it's got <laughs> problems, baby. <laughs> well, and then I guess my last things that I, I was excited for was just, um, you know, I think was just a lot, a bunch of Toy Fair stuff. So if anybody want to check that out, Toy Fair was this weekend. I mean, it was supposed to be this weekend, but they canceled it. But a lot of the toy oh. companies did their own kind of uh, promotional releases and interviews with some of the toy reviewers. And uh, yeah, That's definitely cool. check out some of those stuff that came out. But 
Um, yeah, other than that, I was kind of excited for it. Oh, uh, they're doing a Blue's Clues, um, like, uh, Spider-Man uh, Homecoming kind of movie where all three of the Blue's Clues uh, hosts are doing <laughs> together doing the I movie. think I heard about that, yeah, actually. Oh, my God. Uh, that's so silly. But yeah, we'll, we'll have to check that out. Um, I know there's some other stuff I did want to go through, but, yeah, I'll, I'll have to put that on our wait list. I have, yeah, no like, worries. I had a short here. I totally understand. I think I pretty much covered everything. Like I said, I'm I'm really hoping that the DC stuff is going to be good. It's looking pretty promising after their shorts on the football. And I think uh, Peacemaker was once something, but maybe we'll save that for next uh, yeah, episode. Definitely. And we'll do a little Peacemaker episode. But yeah, those were pretty much all my ones. If uh, we had anything else, we could always discuss it next week. But thank you, everybody, who came through to watch this week. We appreciate you. And uh, if you have any questions and stuff, you can always comment on these videos later and we'll check them out. But yeah, thank you for watching, everybody. Oh, have a good one. If you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve. So please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.